right, how's everybody doing? Hotel. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Uh, it is Monday, April 16th, 2018. And, uh, you know, we broadcasted early in the day, so we were giving some updates in the Starbucks story. There's another story dealing with Starbucks and another African-American man who was denied access to the bathroom because he didn't purchase something. And this is in the Los Angeles area, okay? So I first saw this article earlier today from uh, thegrill.com and then also uh, atlantablackstar.com has an article about this as well, all right? So everybody share this broadcast on your uh, Facebook page and uh, invite your friends to tune in also, okay? Uh, so I want to get to uh, this story. So this is crazy. So this has not been a good uh, last seven days or so for Starbucks. All right. And it looks like it's about to get worse. OK. All right. Let me pin this uh, story here. Let me pin this to the thread. OK. All right. So let's look at this story here from the grill .com. Um so video, another racist Starbucks incident involving black man barred from bathroom. This incident occurred in the L.A. area. This is from uh, April 16, 2018. I went and watched the video also. Sean King, Black Lives Matter activist Sean King, uh, posted, the, well, he posted this video. I'm not sure who originally posted it. But uh, it looks like on Sean, uh, Sean King posted this video. This video has been viewed so far. 854,000 times, 854,000 times it's been viewed so far. So a new video has been released on social media showing a Starbucks manager alerting authorities to a uh, black man removed uh, from a Los Angeles area store. Before the video began, the man was allegedly denied the bathroom code and was told that it was because he had not yet made a purchase. So the man began filming, okay, and uh, his name is Brandon Ward, Brandon Ward. So he began filming, uh, I take it with his smartphone or so, and uh, he, he filmed, he, he saw a white man leave the restroom and asked the guy if he had made a purchase, and this is on video. So the white male's name uh, is Weston, and Weston said that he had not yet made a purchase, but he planned to make a purchase. So Brandon, the African-American man, Brandon, um, uh, filming the incident, then asked, uh, the, he then questions the Starbucks employees about why he was denied the bathroom code because of lack of a purchase. But the white man, Weston, who also had not bought anything, was allowed access to the restroom, okay? So they're, they're caught, they're caught red-handed on camera. Um, so the woman behind the register informed uh, Brandon, uh, that she was the store manager. She denied that she had given the white male the code and she told the young man to leave the store because it is a private business. Interesting. It's a private business. We're going to come to that in just a minute. This is a private business and you need to stop recording. This is what she said. She said, quote, I am the store manager and I'm all, and I, I'm asking you to leave right now. You're not allowed to be here anymore, you need to leave. End quote. This is not this is not going good for Starbucks. And Rosalind Brewer, who is the chief operating officer of Starbucks, she's African American. She was hired. They didn't just hire her. So there was an article from WatchTheYard uh, dot com. It had no date on the article, but there was a hashtag in 2017. They did not just hire her. Okay, so don't just don't say oh they just hired a black woman. No, she was hired back in September. Of about September 2017, she was hired. She's the former uh, CEO of Sam's Club, okay, Rosalind Brewer. If you read Black Enterprise Magazine, you've seen Rosalind Brewer in Black Enterprise Magazine. She talks about how she was appalled at the video of what took place in Philadelphia. There's an article from thegrio.com about that as well, G-R-I-O, thegrio.com. All right, so the store manager here in the Los Angeles area in the actual city is uh, Redondo, uh, Redondo uh, Beach, Redondo Beach, California. OK, it's not L.A., it's the L.A. area. 
So she says, this is a private business, et cetera, and I want you to leave. So the self-identified store manager then walks from out of the camera's view. The young man filming, his name is Brandon, said, quote, I'm not allowed to be in here anymore. He said, why are they so upset with me, West? That's the white guy. Why are they so upset with me? He said, what did I do? I just tried to use the bathroom like you did. Is it my skin color? Okay. All right. So he said, is it my skin color? All right. So um, in the last few seconds of the video, a uniformed man is seen appearing to try to usher uh, Brandon out of the store. It is not clear uh, it is not clear if that person was a police officer or a security guard. So the young man filming stated that um, the young man filming stated that the location of the Starbucks was uh, Artesia, 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 and Hawthorne, which means this incident occurred in Redondo Beach, California, less than an hour from Los Angeles. This is according to the article from thegrio.com. All right. And this is on top of what happened April 12th, Thursday, April 12th in Philadelphia. That video has been viewed over eight million times. It's gone viral. It's gone nationwide. CEO Kevin Johnson, CEO of Starbucks, was just on Good Morning America this morning talking about this. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, you have Melissa De DePino, uh, Melissa DePino, who was the uh, white woman who filmed uh, that video that's been viewed over 8 million times, she was on MSNBC today. Uh, um, Belshi and Rule on MSNBC comes on 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? So the Los Angeles area incident comes on the heels of the viral video from Philadelphia. We know there were protests uh, early this morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning at the Philadelphia um uh, Starbucks as well. So the CEO of Starbucks, Kevin Johnson, is on the ground in the city of brotherly love after two African-American men were shown no love and locked up uh, locked up by police. They were, they were at the police station for eight hours, according to their attorney, for simply sitting in a coffee house while waiting for a friend. All right. So we, we, we know that story as well. All right. Now, uh, you saw my broadcast earlier. There was an article from Philly.com that talked about how uh, there reports that the manager has been fired. As of 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's an article from Philly.com that gave, gave clarification. Uh, she has not been fired yet. She has uh, left the store. The manager who called 911 has left the store pending an investigation by Starbucks, a spokeswoman for the company said, okay? So this was an article from philly.com of the Philadelphia Inquirer, um, and it's updated 5.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, April 16, 2018. Name of this article is Protest Mount, Starbucks CEO apologizes for arrest of two black men at Philadelphia store. We'll post this link here on the thread of the broadcast uh, on Facebook Live. You can check this out because uh, I saw the New York Daily News. I saw they had an article. The headline said that the manager, something to the effect the manager had been fired. But when you read the article, it said that uh, it was something different. So apparently the manager has not been uh, fired. Now, thegrill.com has an article because the manager of the Philadelphia store was interviewed. OK, and she explained her side of the story. So in all fairness, you know, I do radio. I've been doing radio for eight years. I report on the stories. We're supposed to report on both sides of the story. I talked about I uh, talked about the uh, broadcast, the Facebook live broadcast. P uh, police Commissioner Richard Ross did to explain his side and say that the police did nothing wrong. I disagree with that, but I shared that with you. So here is the, the manager of the Philadelphia store. Here is her side of the story. So the grill.com has an article from Monday, April 16, 2018. Starbucks manager explains why she called police to arrest black men. Starbucks manager explains why she called police to arrest black men. Okay. And then also, I meant, I meant to tell y'all, share this broadcast on your own Facebook page. <laughs> Invite your friends to tune in. I get, get caught, so caught up in it. Forgot to tell you, share this broadcast on your own Facebook page, all right? For those just tuning in, hey, this is Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. 
I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. And be sure to um, sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. We send out uh, email newsletters with news and videos and things like this throughout the week, all right? So let's check, uh, let's check out this, uh, uh, what she had to say. Okay, so um, so Starbucks has been dragged through the mud on social media the last few days uh, since footage of two black men being arrested for sitting while black galvanized the public. As the hashtag boycott Starbucks hashtag started uh, to trend and local Philadelphia activists began to organize at the 1801 Spruce Street location. That's the address of the uh, Philadelphia Starbucks, 1801 Spruce Street. Use that hashtag, hashtag boycott Starbucks, okay? And then also I'm going to give you this. I posted it on our fan page, the African History Network, uh, and uh, I shared it with you in the broadcast mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, shopblack.us, S-H-O-P-P-E, shopblack.us. They have a good article, 47 black-owned um, coffee and tea businesses that are good alternatives to Starbucks. So we just posted that there on a thread, boom, okay? 47 black-owned coffee and tea businesses that are good alternatives to Starbucks, okay? That is from shopblack.us. I've looked at some of their articles. They have some fantastic articles there dealing with supporting African-American-owned businesses, et cetera. So check that out. And then also that uh, post that I just did here on the thread, it also includes the article that I wrote back in 2015 called Why Did Dr. King Tell Us to Redistribute the Pain? Understanding the Power of Economic Withdrawal. Why did Dr. King tell us to redistribute the pain, understanding the power of economic withdrawal? Read that article also. You can read all of my articles that I write at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, because that deals with his last speech, April 3rd, 1968. I've been to the mountaintop where he talks about economic empowerment and economic boycotts, okay? All right, so... Um, so the hashtag boycott Starbucks is trending, okay? And uh, news broke on philly.com about what took place in uh, April 12th, Thursday, April 12th in Philadelphia. Uh, the, the manager in question, uh, and so uh, news broke from philly.com that the manager in question had left the company in what a company spokeswoman called a mutual decision, okay? Uh, later in the day, that, that was clarified. Early in the day, uh, the company spokeswoman, because I've been reading numerous articles, especially from philly.com. Philly Early in the day, it said that uh, the spokeswoman said that uh, 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 she parted ways uh, with that store and it was a mutual decision. Later in the day, she said that she erred in saying that and that the woman has left the store pending an investigation. OK, so I just want to clarify that. Well, now it seems we can get a glimpse of this story from the side of the manager in question and finally find out what she was thinking in the moments leading up to that now infamous call to the police. So in an article shared by Apple.News, Apple.News, journalist Christopher Norris shares what he learned when he showed up to the coffee uh, shop on Saturday, this past Saturday, April 14, 2018, to confront the manager directly. OK, she wouldn't give her last name. She just gave her first name as Holly. So according to journalist Christopher Norris, quote, Holly, who wouldn't give her last name nor share a business card for fear that it would spark online stalking either by me or whomever I passed her information along to, has managed the 18th and Spruce Street location of Starbucks for and during that time, she has encountered many individuals who loiter in the cafe with no intentions of purchasing. At least one of these persons, she claims, chased her around the store after she asked them to leave. Now, according to Holly, who's the manager who called the police on the two African-American men, uh, Holly grew visibly flustered during, uh, Chris, uh, during my unrelenting questioning a corporate policy germane exclusively to center city Philadelphia locations prohibits excessive loitering, okay? A corporate policy germane exclusively 
to center city Philadelphia locations prohibits excessive loitering. And if that policy is violated, then management has the discretion to ensure it's in, to sure to ensure that it is enforced, even if it means calling the police. Now, Holly told Christopher Norris, uh, reporter Christopher Norris, that she doesn't inform the customers that she'll be calling the police. Holly refused to answer whether it was normal for baristas or management to call police when uh, the loitering policy is violated by customers. My question is, how many white people do you call the police on who are sitting there using the free Wi-Fi, sitting there talking with friends and haven't purchased anything? This is what I want to know. OK, um, Melissa DePino, when she was on MSNBC uh, today, she said that she was at that uh, Starbucks the day before and sat there for an hour, didn't buy anything. Nobody bothered her. OK, so. Um, all right. So this is what uh, uh, this is what happened now. After after having days to come up. So Christopher Norris. Uh, said after having day, well, the article here from uh, the grill.com, I should say, said after having days to come up with a good excuse and potentially rethink several of her life choices, all this woman provided, Holly, the manager, as an explanation was essentially, quote, I'm just following protocol, end quote. Now, Christopher Norris points out that during his visit, he also ran into a black college student named La uh, Leah, I guess L Y A, I guess it's Leah. Olaya, Leah, who had been peacefully sitting in the venue on Saturday to execute her own one person sitting. In the two hours she sat there, uh, Laya says she was approached three times by staff and asked, and asked if she was going to order anything. Conversely, she noted that several other presumably, presumably non-black patrons who only received a complimentary cup of water were left alone for doing the exact same things. So she's here for two hours, African-American woman, and she's asked three times if she's gonna order anything. She doesn't order anything. But she says that there's several other presumably non-black patrons who only received a complimentary cup of water and they were left alone and didn't buy anything either. So when asked to comment on this ongoing disparity in treatment, Holly, the manager at the 1801 Spruce Street location in Philadelphia, Holly was unable to give the, the writer Christopher Norris a coherent response and then slinked away from answering any further questions. So it seems there's a clear Implicit bias is a clear, there's a clear example of racial profile. There's a clear difference in the treatment of African Americans who are sitting for a friend or to before they order, not buy something, and white people who do this all the time and sit there for an hour, two hours, don't buy anything, and they're not harassed. Her silence speaks volumes, as the article from the group from the grill.com concludes. Very interesting. And you wonder why people are saying hashtag boycott Starbucks. I mean, the, I, I, now I told you earlier, I don't drink coffee, okay? And when I travel, I'm in the airport, you know, I think maybe last year, I may have stopped at a Starbucks twice at an airport and got a muffin, but I don't do that anymore because I looked and saw how many calories are in one of those little muffins. It's like, damn, there 500 calories in one of those muffins. Oh, hell no, I ain't doing that, okay? So uh, let's post this article again. 47 Black-owned coffee and tea companies that are alternatives to Starbucks. This is from shopblack.us, S-H-O-P-P-E, shopblack.us, okay? And you wonder why that people are outraged because they're seeing this take place, okay? So Dr. King was correct when he talked about redistributing the pain through economic withdrawal strategies, targeted, sustained economic withdrawal strategies. And the uh, article from uh, earlier today I shared with you, the article from uh, NBCNews.com, and I'll see if I can pull this up quickly here. 
uh, it was dealing with the uh, protests uh, taking place. So, so this article from NBCNews.com is from uh, April 15th. This is from Sunday, April 15th, right? And this talks about um, some other people who were in the Starbucks and didn't buy anything, weren't harassed. So you're going to see a lawsuit from this, maybe more than one lawsuit, right? So check out this article from NBCNews.com. Protests follow outrage after two black men arrested at, at Philly Starbucks, okay? Um, and let me see. Let's scroll down here. In the article, okay, so this one sister, Michelle Sahini, S-A-A-H-E-N-E. -E. Michelle Sahini witnessed the entire event on Thursday, April 12th. And she had been at the Starbucks for nearly an hour. She told NBC News on Sunday, April 15th, she said as a black woman, she was slightly nervous when the police officers entered the coffee shop. This is in Philadelphia. But she was then shocked as the two men, uh, as the two men were approached by members of law enforcement. OK, there was six cops involved in arresting these guys but sitting there at the table talking to each other. After the two men refused, were refused the bathroom, they just sat at a table silently and played with their phones as they waited for a friend uh, to arrive, she told NBC News. She said, quote, the cops were asking them to leave because they weren't purchasing anything. She said, quote, the two men said they were confused. They said, this is a Starbucks. Since when are people asked to leave a Starbucks who are just sitting there, end quote. So it appears, I don't know about every Starbucks across the country, but from the numerous articles that I've read, it appears at least at this one here in Philadelphia, they don't enforce the policy equally. It appears, I've never been at that Starbucks, but it appears that white people are allowed usually to sit and talk, get a complimentary cup of water, complimentary cup of water, sit there for an hour, two hours, don't buy anything, and they're not bothered. Now, Michelle Sahini went on to say she said that a white man sitting next to her had been at the Starbucks for 30 minutes without making a purchase. And a jogger came in and used the bathroom without making a purchase. Is that the one in Philadelphia? And you wonder why people are mad. That's one of the reasons she felt compelled to approach the employee who called 911. So she confronted, she confronted the employee there who was Holly. Apparently, that was Holly, the manager. She confronted her, okay? And she asked, did you feel threatened? Okay? She said, uh, she asked uh, the Starbucks barista. She, did, she said, she didn't look at me. She said, did you feel like your life was threatened? Okay, so we have a little distortion here. It should clear up. So, hey, bear with me. Stand by, everybody. Stand by, there's a little audio issue here. It should clear up. How's everybody doing? Stand by the uh, the distortion should clear up here. Okay, and uh, let's see here. Let me post this here while we wait for that to clear up. Uh, if you like this type of information, if you like this type of information we share at the African History Network, we uh, you can register for the online courses that I teach. Uh, we have a bundle pack uh, dealing with history, uh, online courses. Uh, Bundle pack of six of them, and then also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, uh, as well. Okay, uh, we have a lot of information there for you. You can order my DVD lectures there also. Okay, David, how you doing? Join Yvonne, hashtag boycott Starbucks. Absolutely, Yvette Green, economic withdrawal. Okay, all right. So check out this article here from, uh, we'll post the article here on the thread. Check out this article from NBCNews.com as well. Um, what's the name of this article? Protests follow outrage after two black men arrested at Philly Starbucks. Okay. Okay. Check that out as well. All right. Uh, I want to let you all know, in those in the Cleveland area, I'll be in Cleveland Saturday, April 29th at the Mitchell Event Center for the uh, Cleveland Natural Hair Care Expo. I'll be a vendor there. I'll be doing a workshop dealing with the role of black women in the film Black Panther. Those in the Detroit area, Saturday, April 21st, I'll be at Burke's Theater in the Eastern Market District. 
district for the uh, uh, Detroit Entrepreneur Expo taking place 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'll be speaking at 3 p.m. that day. Um, visit, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put the flyer on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, we'll put it up there. And uh, I'll be doing a presentation dealing with um, lessons from the film Black Panther, economic guerrilla warfare, political self-defense, and uh, how to work on the vote. All right, we got to get out of here because the distortion is not clear enough. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating upon and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Uh, Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.